Hey, this is Lance from LangChain. I want to give a quick review of GPT-5 and talk about some of my own evaluations of it. So what's the bottom line here? GPT-5 appears to be very good at coding and agents, very competitive pricing, weaker than 4.0 and 4.5 at writing, a strong daily driver, but really the story here seems to be setting a new Pareto frontier of intelligence versus price. This is something that Swix put out. It's a good kind of distillation of the story. You can see they're pushing out a little bit further than Gemini, which is the previous Pareto frontier here. And they're really trying to price much more competitively relative to, for example, the plot models. So for the same level of intelligence, you can achieve it at a much lower price. Many people will not feel, though, a dramatic leap like we felt between GPT-3 and 4. But it does seem to be a very good model for building agents and coding. And I'll show some examples below. Here's two good resources to check out from Simon and Swix at Layton Space. Now, here's one big story here, pricing. Look where it's priced. You can see Sonnet, Opus 4, way up here at 15 and 3 dollars per million input token. GBD5 is down around $1.25. It's even priced lower than 4.0 and 4.1. Now you can see there's a few variants. This is through the API, Mini, and Nano. And this is the point that Switch is making about the Pareto Frontier. They're really trying to push this out further still than Gemini, which is already that intelligence versus cost frontier. We're going to see the price per million tokens on the x-axis, and then the intelligence level by ELO score on the y. So they're really aiming to offer the lowest price model for any given intelligence level. Now, an interesting point is that through the API, you can pick a few different models. They have main, mini, thinking, and pro. In ChatGPT, though, in the app, they use a router to decide automatically for you which model to use. I will make a note that if you're trying to use this today, there were some confusions in the OpenAI SDK. You can see the version here. These are the model names available. So they didn't quite match up with these. This will probably be fixed soon. So this point might be irrelevant, but just keep that in mind. Simon made the point to me on Twitter, though, that just the plain GPT-5 through the API is the model he's been using as his daily driver. So that's what I did my testing with. Now, how about tone and style? A lot of people have said it's less strong at writing than 4.0 and 4.1 or 4.5, but it's better than the prior O series models. Better than the reasoning models, worse than the prior chat models at writing. The O models had a more kind of academic lean in the way they wrote. GPT-5 is more practical, but apparently not quite as conversational as 4.0 or 4.1 or 4.5. Now, I think a big story here is using this with agents and tool calling. This is a nice anatomy of a, of a GPT-5 prompt put out by Layton Space. Nothing too new here. I do like this point about providing a compass, clear structured pointers. We see this quite a bit. Anthropics talked about this a lot as well. Provide heuristics when building agents. Give agents tool use limits. Give it practical heuristics for calling tools. Give it good tool descriptions. Nothing revolutionary here. But it is really underscoring that a primary use case for this model is building agents and coding. Now, they clearly build GPT-5 for long-running agents. It's state-of-the-art tool calling on the Tau Square bench put up by Sierra. Good at interleaf thinking, good at using open-ended tools. Lay laid out, your tools should fit into these categories, make sure they're general, and the model will just use them effectively. Now, this is another kind of interesting point looking at the time horizon of tasks based on how long it takes a human to do them. By model release date, we're on this exponential. Models are getting more and more capable at longer horizon tasks. GPT-5 pushes that out to an hour, 45 minutes for a 50% completion rate. So I think a real emphasis here is building agents, tool use, coding. That seems really what they're pushing along with very competitive pricing. Now their report stay there on Swebench some interesting praise for the model with respect to coding. Now, this is a nice chart I saw put out on Twitter that compares the latest Sonnet models to GPT-5. GPT-5 does indeed report slightly better performance than Opus 4.1 on Sweebench. There's some discussion about this on Twitter. In any case, the point is it's a strong coding model. Clearly appears to rival Claude Opus 4.1 in Sonnet. 
Interestingly, if you recall back previously, the price point, though, is much lower. And again, with writing, not really a great writer, so just be aware of that. Now, in terms of the usage, again, at least as of 8.7, the naming is confusing. Simon mentioned he's just been testing GPT-5, so there we go. Make sure you've upgraded OpenAI, and you can just access this in Langchain with OpenAI slash GPT-5. Easy enough. Now, let me talk about some testing that I've done. So I'm going to open up something here. So this is Open Deep Research, very popular repo. And it is an open source deep research agent that we put together. And I worked on quite a bit with Vadim and Nick. And it's basically a multi-agent system that conducts deep research, much in the same way that Claude's recent multi-agent researcher works, where it'll do some scoping on the user's request. It'll then kick off a, a lead supervisor that will initiate a team of sub-agents that do research, and then it'll write the report in one shot at the end. Now, I recently updated this repo to use GPT-5, and I use GPT-5 both as my supervisor agent as well as my researcher agents. So what's happening here is I'm using GPT-5 for this step and this step. I'm still using GPT-4 for writing because GPT-5 is apparently not a strong at writing. So that's a key point to make. But I want to see how well GPT-5 can orchestrate deep research. I ran this on Deep Research Bench. So Deep Research Bench is an evaluation framework for deep research that recently put out. We are currently number six here with our Open Deep Research, which is pretty good. We are the highest rated, you can see MIT license, fully open source deep research agent here. You can see our prior score is 44.3 for overall. Now, what's going on here? How this works is you run this on a set of 100 input prompts, and they have 100 kind of gold standard reports from experts in specific fields that they then use Gemini as an LM as judge to compare against. They look at a bunch of these different scores. And so it's basically an LM as judge evaluation of your final report versus a golden set of 100 high quality reports put together by experts. That's the story here. So I ran this on GPT-5 as a researcher, and I did actually see quite a significant bump in performance. This is 4.1. You can see 43.1. Sonnet was 44%. GPT-5 achieves 49.4% performance, which is very close to the current state of the art. Now listen, the other models have also gotten better. So I'm not claiming that this is currently state of the art. The benchmark needs to be verified. So we would need to submit our deep researcher with GPT-5, and I may indeed do that. But the point is, I see a big jump in performance between 4.1 and Sonnet 4 with GPT-5. Take it with a grain of salt, do your own analysis, but my testing shows it's quite strong. And what I'm doing under the hood here is I'm basically calling a search tool with interleaf thinking. Basically, I provide a think tool, a search tool. It uses a think tool to plan and to reason in between search tool calls. That's really it. It's a very simple agent in terms of its layout. But I see a big jump with GPT-5. So I think it's absolutely worth testing GPT-5 if you're building agents and for coding as well. Also, price-wise, it's going to be lower than 4.1, so you're going to get a bump in performance for a lower price. So maybe just to summarize, listen, if you go online, you see the opinions on Twitter, for example, people are a little bit unimpressed. Okay, it wasn't the jump we saw between GPT-3 and 4, but I will say between the 4 series and 5, it looks like they really optimized on price. They really optimized for coding, for tool use. So it is a pretty important pragmatic upgrade. And it seems to be just a strict Pareto improvement over the prior GPT models. And they've kind of reset this new Pareto frontier for price versus intelligence. So absolutely consider, so absolutely test it in particular with any agents you're building. It's worth some careful investigation. So hopefully this is useful and I will continue to be testing this and share any additional insights. Thanks.